Hello everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my wine channel. Today I'm excited to bring you a review of the 2009 Chateau Claire Melion from the a fifth growth from the uh, Poyac region on the left bank of Bordeaux. For those who are Bordeaux drinkers, um, you'll be fairly familiar with this winery. This is wine. This is a wine winery that is owned by the Baron Philippe Rothschild family, who also owns Chateau Mouton Rothschild and also Chateau d'Armelac. And so these are kind of hand in hand, always be um, are kind of in the same conversation. Some people. Um, refer to this as uh, baby uh, mouton or some of them some people will talk to about the two dancers right the two dancers uh, because some people who can't pronounce the name they'll say oh, the two dancer wine that's what you lose any reference to two dancers this is Claire Million. so uh, a couple of uh, kind of pronunciation things um, again it's Claire. The C is silent. It's Claire Million. I've always said Clerc Million, but uh, I think that's incorrect. But you might hear that sometimes people will say Clerc Million. And um, again, um, the one mistake that I have to correct, it's part of the 1855 classification system. It's a fifth growth. And I always say Grand Cru Classé. C L A S S E. No, it's the E. The E is silent, so it's just Grand Cru class. So sorry about that. Let's talk about this winery. Um, it has a long history, of course, because if it was rated in the 1855 classification system, then it must be. Uh, it was around in 1855, so it was around. Um, it started in about the 1789, and that's when the Claire family bought it. Um, and Milon is a hamlet in the Poyac region where this is located. So that's how you get Claire Milon. Uh, so it was uh, in 1855, it was classified as a growth. At that time, it wasn't owned by Mouton. It was owned by the Claire family. Um, and then at a certain point, it was sold to a person called Mondon. So for many years, it was actually known for as Claire Milon Mouton. So between 1855 and 1970, there was a lot that happened with the winery. So the modern age of Claire Milan is only starts in 1970. Uh, previous to that, it really had a sketchy history. So in 1855, it was a great wine because it was part of the classification system. But between 1855 and 1970, when it's owned by uh, the Mondown family and also by other various people, um, it went into disrepute a lot. A couple of reasons. What mainly because uh, with deaths, the the vineyard got split. It got sold, and when Mouton actually bought it, it wasn't really cared for very well, and it was only about half the size it is today, and it was originally. So um, when it started out, it was much bigger winery. By 1970, when Mouton bought it, it was only about 17 acres uh, or hectares, and so it was about half and. Along the years, Mouton have um, acquired back those lands and now it's about 41 hectares or about 75, 80 uh, acres. So it's really interesting to know. I've never had this, but I'll probably look out for it just for interest sake. But if you look at Claire Million in the 50s and 60s, it won't, it'll be named Claire Million uh, Mondon. And so this name Claire Million only began in 1970. The only the other interesting thing is this was not the label the original label so what happened is that when Mouton took it over um, they wanted a, a better label and Mouton has a very um, special museum of fine art uh, with respect to wine at their winery and I was privileged enough to go to this winery to to, to view this museum and in there they have all these um, pieces of uh, art, mostly um, kind of uh, metal, uh, kind of in, in jewelry, uh, gilded um, kind of sculptures. And they've used that for many of their labels. And I'll explain that later. So the first label when they acquired it um, in 1970 it was a silver gift marriage cup held by a lady. And that's um, something that's in their museum. But what they have on this, this two dancers, so this actually was changed in 1983. Uh, after 1983, the label looked like this, and it changed to these two dancers, which were created by a 17th century goldsmith displayed in the Museum of 
wine in art at the Mouton Rothschild. I was, um, again, fortunate enough to go to that museum. I got to take a picture of that. I'm not sure going to probably put it in this video, but my, I might put it on my Instagram um, page, just the picture of that and compare it to the label. It's kind of neat. Um, they also have had one label change to the best of my knowledge. In 2010, they also had a special label because their um, winery, the, the Vat Room, was renovated and they wanted to celebrate that. So they had a special label for 2010. So that's kind of neat to, know, to note also. So Mouton Rothschild did a lot when he took over this winery in 1970. Again, in 1970, it was only about 17 hectares. It was only about half the size of the original estate and what it is today, only about half of it. And it was in um, not a very good wine, quite frankly. Um, and so they had to do a lot of work on it and they put on a lot of effort into this. It is in the northeastern part of Poyac. It is basically the hilltop of Mousset. Um, it's mostly gravel sitting on clay and limestone, and this is uh, very good soil for Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. So the general uh, proportion of the vineyard, what's grown in there, about 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 37% Merlot, 10% Cab Franc, 2% Petit Verdot, and 1% Camembert. A uh, lot of that is old vines. Some of those vines go back, I think the average age is like 53 years. Some of that goes back to the 1910. So they have a lot of old vines. So again, the significance of old vines is that they're going to have uh, much more complexity because they go deeper. But the bad or the disadvantage of that is because they're older vines, they probably won't have much um, output compared to new, newer vines that will probably... Um, produce more grapes. Again, since taking over the winery, they've done a really great job um, of overhauling it. And they've, I think, done the most with this winery. I think it's really, pro in its good years like this year, it's very prototypical of Poyac. And I think it's um, a really great wine if you want to understand Poyac at a fairly decent price. And so, um, Clerc and Darmilac, of the two, I think uh, Clerc is a little bit um, better representation, in my opinion, um, and especially good vintages. When you drink it, you'll understand Poya uh, very well. And I, I, it's quite early accessible, so that's the other good thing about Clerc. Um, it's like Lafitte or Mouton takes so long, it takes so long to age, um, whereas Clerc will um, generally drink a little bit um, earlier than some of the higher growths. In 2007, they had the first gravity fed uh, vat house and then 2011, they finished their new barrel room. And then I think in 2017, I read somewhere that they started to use some robots in their system. So they're very um, organic. They're very um, technologically advanced. So uh, have done everything to make the most of the winery. Um, in general, their, uh, their wines are aged 30% in new, new oak for about 14 to 18 months. Okay, let's look at the label. It says Baron Philippe de Rothschild. Um, there's two dancers and it's in the Museum of Mouton. And I've been fortunate enough to actually see this in the Museum of um, uh, Mouton Rothschild. So Clerc Milan, 2009 Grand Cru Class A. And uh, this is the back. I will kind of translate it, but um, it's all in French. The cork is kind of short uh, comparatively. Um, I just did a review of the uh, Malartic uh, La Graviere, the white wine, and I think the, the cork was a little bit longer than this. So, um, and there's the two dancers. Color, as expected, nice and rich, dark, plummy, almost a red, blood red type consistency. Uh, very attractive. Let's taste the wine. So I will let you know that I had this open f last night with dinner. Uh, when it first opened, very tight. We put it in a decanter and drank it over the course of the meal, which is about an hour and a half. But it was still tight. Um, the aroma was better than the taste and it was very tannic, not a lot of fruit, just a lot of dark fruit. So I have had it in the fridge 
now I'm bringing it out again. It's been out for about two hours, so it's getting to room temperature and uh, retasting it today. Yeah, on the second day, much better, much more expressive and aromatic. Pretty classic Poyak um, aromas. So um, oak, uh, black cur cassis, dark plums, um, anise, uh, little, maybe I would say a little bit of graphite, um, a little bit of earthiness and a charcoal. Yeah, really classic Poyak. Uh, on the taste, all dark fruits, um, blackberries, black plums, um, black currants, um, more on the dried part of the fruit rather than ripe fruit. Um, good aftertaste, little bit of tobacco at the end, hints of oak. Really classic Poyak drinking wine and a really good example of Clerk. Um, I think actually Clerk is really comfortable. This is a really great tasting Clerk and really comfortable in this. Um, it, Clerk was never meant to be a high-end wine. Clerk was always meant to be a drinking wine and an affordable value wine. Um, so in the scheme of things in Poyak, it is still considered affordable and it's nice. It's so drinkable. It's actually the really good expression of Poyak. If you want to drink Poyak, Clerk in good years like this is really good and really prototypical. In fact, I think it's easier to understand than Lafitte and more typical of Poyak because sometimes Lafitte needs a lot of aging um, to be able to soften. And I would say this is getting, uh, this is a great vintage of Clerk and still performing nicely. It's there, it's probably at its peak. It can probably go another five years. Most clerks, um, if it was on a lesser vintage, uh, it, that might be stretching a bit when you're going 12, 15 years. Clerk is really comfortable five to seven years out of the vintage. Um, and when you can get these type of good vintages, 09 is a stronger vintage. Uh, it's a really good representation of the wine. So my, um, Score of this wine, 92 points. And this is the really comfortable range for Clerk. Between 92 and 94 points, that's what it's meant to be. A really, really great drinking, uh, prototypical Poyak wine. Sometimes in really great vintages, it'll stretch to 95, 96 points. In kind of um, lesser vintages, it'll go down to 88, 90 points. But this is really prototypical Clerk. Wonderful example of the wine. I'm just loving this. Um, really comfortable. It would, I would say it's um, medium bodied, medium, uh, medium to low acidity. Um, the tannins are kind of medium. So it's really nice and drinking really well. Um, I would really encourage anyone who wants to understand Poyak to get a bottle of Clerk, especially a better, a good vintage of it. It really is prototypical Poyak. Um, hope this is been a useful tasting. Until next time, happy drinking.